If you've played any strategic card game before, you probably understand how important card advantage can be. If this is your first strategic card game, or maybe you're just not familiar with the term, card advantage typically means that you have more cards available than your opponent. Cards are one of the resources that have to be managed in card games, and they typically represent your number of options available. More cards means more options, and having more than your opponent means that you have the upper hand. Other card games often have additional resources that have to be managed, such as mana, magicka, or power. In Gwent, however, there is no additional resource that needs to be managed. Any card can be played from your hand without any other requirements needing to be met first. As such, cards go from being a resource to being THE resource. This places card advantage at a premium in Gwent, as it can often decide games outright. There are other things that can help offset being at a card disadvantage, such as synergies in the game or the quality of cards, but it is really difficult to win a round with an inferior number of cards. In Gwent, there are two kinds of card advantage that I want to talk about. Uh, the first is the most obvious, and it's uh, what I call direct card advantage. This is when you simply have more cards than your opponent. Uh, you typically gain this by getting your opponent to overcommit resources in order to win one of the rounds. In this example, you can see where I pass the first round while having the strength lead. My opponent and I both have the same number of cards when I pass, so he has to put himself at less total cards than I have in order to take the round. Though I lose the round, I'm now in a better position to win future rounds because I have more resources than my opponent. You can also gain direct card advantage through the use of spies. Spy cards often give your opponent some sort of benefit, but in exchange you often gain a card to replace the spy you just played. Here I play Avalak, which lets my opponent draw a card, but I draw two cards to replace the spy. This keeps me ahead in cards going into the final round. No matter how you get it, direct card advantage in Gwent is incredibly important because it represents having more options and resources than your opponent. It also means you get to have what I call the play advantage, which is something that I plan to cover in another video. There would have to be a significant difference in card quality to overcome the difference in numbers alone. If your opponent has 5 bronze cards and you have 4 gold cards, for example, you might be able to win with just raw power. There is, however, Another way to potentially overcome being at a direct card disadvantage, and it's the second type of card advantage that I want to talk about. I personally refer to this as persistent advantage, and it's the ability to carry cards over from round to round. There are several examples of ways that cards can carry over from one round to another. The monster's faction has a passive ability that lets them keep a unit on the board. Some cards like Morkvarg or Neckers replace themselves when they die. This includes dying due to the round ending. Olgird resurrects at the beginning of every round. Mahakam Defenders and a couple of other units have resilience, which means they stay on the board when the round changes. All of these cards represent a carryover of strength from round to round. These are not cards in hand, but they do place a burden on the opposing player that must be overcome by expending cards from their own hand. So, while these cards and effects don't give you additional options or additional plays, they do create a type of pseudo-card advantage just by existing. So, let's go ahead and take a look at an example. In this example, I pass the round when I have a strength lead, but I am down one card to my opponent. After some deliberation, my opponent decides that he is also going to pass, thus conceding me the round, but going into the next round, up one card. Now, as we talked about before, having direct card advantage is typically a good thing. However, I had four Neckers on the board when I passed the round. When a Necker dies, and this includes when a round passes, they replace themselves with another copy from your deck. So, instead of just going to the next round with an empty board, I go to the next round with a basically an army of Neckers. Uh, this is that... Uh, pseudo card advantage or this persistent advantage that I was referring to. So even though I am down in cards, I carry a very heavy advantage just due to the strength that's on the board when I go into the next round. This advantage ultimately leads me to win the game because my opponent has to spend so many resources in round two just to catch up. 
So that, in a nutshell, is card advantage in its various forms. Card advantage is closely linked to what I call the play advantage, which will be my next video geared toward new players. I hope you found this useful, and I have a couple more videos for new players planned, so that being said, if you are new and you want more information on a specific mechanic or technique, feel free to let me know in the comments. And as always, thanks for watching.